Alrighty. Hey everybody, Steve here, the retired hobby tech guy. And today we're going to be talking to you coming from the labs of the buried life. Today we're going to be talking about the top Z distance testing, what setting for easy support removal when you're doing your prints. I've noticed there's some interesting information. And of course, we're going to verify this by doing a test. So what we're talking about are the supports that you have, whether they're the default supports, tree supports, or hybrid supports, whatever they are. So the top Z distance is actually the space between the supports and the overhang. So is we're going to jump on over here to our Creality Print. And this is the software. And just like most other uh, slicing softwares, what you're going to end up doing is getting some models. And I found these actually on printables under Uncle Jesse. And the link will be in the description box down below. But he has a number of these overhang models that you can test the different top Z heights. And then you could print them and find out. Blanks and where you can actually set the top Z distance to whatever you want. Now, the good thing about these is that if we take a look, uh, I picked out the ones like 0 0.2, 0 0.24, and 0 0.32. These are ones that he had, and you can individually download these uh, from the printables from Uncle Jesse. And then on this one that is 0 0.1, what I ended up doing is that was actually a blank, and I added the lettering on it, and then I changed the top Z distance to 0 0.1. So when we go ahead and we slice this plate up, and again, some of the variables that we're going to be taking a look at are going to be printing at a layer height of 0 0.16. So you have to remember that whatever layer height that you're using, make sure you do a test for that layer height. And again, you could just use a bulk test and just kind of throw everything in there. But with those rules of thumb, basically 1.5 to 2 times your layer height, we'll see what happens. But here's the test that we're going to end up doing. So obviously we have the 0 0.1. So that is supposed to be a pretty hardly fused support that will attach to the model itself. And another important factor is how is the quality of that overhang? So yeah, that's going to be a huge thing. Uh, let's go back and just kind of go over some, some of the information. So like with this one here, uh, the 0 0.1, uh, we go through and we can see that we're doing our layer height over here of 0 0.16. Pretty much everything is stock over here. When we start going to our walls, we're doing a 5% infill. You could probably get away with doing three. I use gyroid. That's my favorite as of right now. And if we go to speed, the only other thing I changed here was the overhang speed of 60 millimeters per second. Uh, that was recommended, and I've done some testing, and that seems to work really well. Uh, the other thing that we have is the big one, the supports. We enabled supports, and we did tree for the auto supports. And with that, we left the style at default. And I'm going to tell you why, because with the default, what we end up having is... You know, we've got our models and we've got some good separation. You know, we see we've got enough distance uh, between the model and the supports themselves. And actually, if we go down here to support object XY distance here on the right is 0 0.6. That is what we're talking about is the distance of 0 0.6 is the distance between your model and the support. And what I found in some instances, at least with this Creality Print and their software is that if I go to Tree Auto Supports and I go to Tree Slim, it comes up with this and it says the interface layer is zero, top Z distance zero, and two walls. Uh, no, I don't want to do that because I've had some problems with that. But when we re-slice this, what I found, even with that setting of the support object XY distance, is that sometimes it'll come up and we'll actually have some of these connectors, like there's one right there. So there we have the contact, and that's the problem that I've seen with Tree Auto supports with the style being Tree Slim. So if we go back to this, to the default, and don't change anything else, now we can see we don't have that 
support trunk touching the model. So I think there still needs to be some work done on Creality Print because of that. So I just kind of, you might use a little bit more uh, support material and filament because of you're using the default and it's a little bit more dense. But the difference between default and tree slam is not that big. So let's continue on. And all of this is sliced. We'll send it to the printer and then we'll head over to the desk and see the results. Okay, now is a great time for you to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll continue on with the video. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at these and see which one seems to be the best. This is the 0 0.1, and I'll just, so that's not bad. Let's do a bigger one. Let's do a small one. You can see those come off pretty good. And then we'll do this big one here, and I'll see how, wow, that is, that is really, really tight. And yeah. So that was a little tight on there. Let's see if we can. And I think these are the default tree supports. So you can see we've got a little bit of marring on there. And one's really tight so you can see the result and how we've got some some leftover filament on there we got a little bit of a little bit of scoring on there yeah you can see how it mars up and there's still some it left some material on there from the interface layers so that's a 0 0.1 so those are kind of hard to cut off so let's see if we can this is the same one. It's a smaller version. So that came off really good. That's not bad. But the question is on the big one. Let's see how this goes. I'll have to, to see how this comes off. So that was a little on there. So not too bad, but still, it's a very strong adhesion. And yeah. So yeah, that's something to taking into consideration. At the underside there, we do see that we've got some material on there that is a little scuffed and marked the support residue. So now let's go ahead and we'll move on to uh, the 0 0.2 with the top C distance. So we can see here. Oh yeah, that's definitely a lot easier. Definitely a lot easier. Okay, let's see this big one here. Uh, that was a little tight. A little tough. So we'd have to, to clean that up a little bit. Let's see how this one goes. That was a little bit better. You can so it's gonna be a little rough. You can see there. These are, those are a little tough on there as well. So, see how that goes. So here's the small one. Of course, that one comes off easy. That one comes off real easy. And do that and let's see how this one comes off. That is still really tight. So you can see the, 
see the adhesion on there. It's a little bit better in some ways than the 0 0.1. Uh, you can tell a little bit of a difference here in taking these off, so that's kind of interesting. So now let's go ahead and we'll go to the 0 0.24. And we can see that. Let's do the the easy one. Oh yeah, that one's always easy. Now the bigger one. Oh, markedly. That is markedly improved. And look at that. We don't get those dingleberries on there. That one was a lot better. How about this one? Oh yeah. So 0 0.24, I'm digging that. Look at that. Those come off great. Oh, this is the best so far. Okay, let's put that one over there. <laughs> then we'll take a look at this. That one just pops right off. Again, the 0 0.24 on the tiny one. Let's see. Got the little brim on there. Separate this. See how this goes? Oh yeah. That is much better. Yeah. 0 0.24. Oh, is oh so nice. And look at that. Look at those surfaces. Those are really nice. So that is the best one so far, the 0 0.24. So that's first place right there. Now we'll do this one, which is the 0 0.32, because that's some information that I found online saying that you take your layer height and double it, and that is what your top Z distance should be. That one is, look at how that is just almost falling off. So, let's see how... <laughs> Support, but barely hanging on. So let's take a look at this here. Oh, that is sweet. Look at that. Not bad at all. And then this one. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Ah. <laughs> this is really good as well. Okay, so we can definitely say that the 0 0.32 definitely was pretty nice. So that answers the question of what should my top Z distance be? And this can be a test that you can do as well. So you can download Uncle Jesse's from Printables, and he has a range of these, so you can find out which is the best top Z distance for you. All right, so that's gonna be it. Uh, okay, so there it is. We finished our top Z distance testing and we found out some very interesting results. So depending on the models that you're printing, whether they're big or small and how well the supports come off, and leave any marks or not on your model, you can do this top Z distance test and find out the best results and the settings for you and your printer. So with that being said, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna close out this video. And the only thing that I ask is you like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. And everybody who watches my channel, try to pass on some useful information. Uh, if you really wanna do me a solid, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description box down below. If you're wondering what the scrolling ticker is, those are the awesome people who have bought me coffee. And if you buy me a coffee, your name could be on the scrolling ticker of much respect. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.